Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game from round 9 of this year's uh, uh, Grenke Chess Classic. It is the Magnus Carlsen versus Vincent Keimer. Magnus defeated Vincent in the first half of the tournament with the black pieces in that beautiful line of the Benoni. And now it's Vincent's uh, turn to, to strike back with the black pieces. So let's see what happened here. Uh, it's a really tough game. Uh, you guys will, will enjoy watching this one. You will have a chance uh, at two positive video moments where you will help the, the leading player uh, take a full point if, if, if at all possible. So let's check it out. Magnus uh, with the white pieces opens with pawn to d4. We have knight f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, inviting the Nimzo Indian. And Vincent, of course, never backs down from a challenge. He goes for bishop to b4. The Nimzo Indian defense is on the board. Knight to f3, uh, the three nice variation of the Nimzo and now pawn to d6. Those of you who watch my videos regularly uh, know that there is no uh, four knights variation of the Nimzo. This is called the Black Knight's Tango and I am only mentioning that because it sounds really awesome. So pawn to d6. We have pawn to g3. Already a, a very rare setup um, uh, against the, the, the Nimzo Indian defense. Magnus wants to seemingly play bishop to g2 and castle kingside. Uh, but we will see what happens. Bishop captures on c3, b captures b6, preparing bishop to b7 to counter Magnus' strong light square bishop. Uh, but Magnus shows that that is not his intention at all. Uh, he plays knight to d2, and it is now as of move 7 that we have a completely new game. So why is Magnus inviting bishop to b7? Uh, well, now that you see it, of course, you know that f3 has to be played and then pawn to e4, and Magnus will be enjoying a full center here, uh, even a fuller one as there's a double c pawn here. So here, bishop to b7 and pawn to f3. Uh, e5 by Vincent, and Magnus just strikes with pawn to e4. Of course, Magnus would welcome a trade on, e on d4 as he would be able to undouble his pawn. So we have castles by Vincent, bishop to d3 by Magnus, not going for bishop to g2, so he full uh, everyone it would seem knight to c6 uh, and knight to b3 defending the pawn on d4 uh, we have knight to e7 and now castles king side we have pawn to h6 rook to b1 uh, putting pressure on that bishop so you should react to this in a, in a way that uh, maybe you play rook to b8 or maybe you play pawn to c5 right away uh, but Vincent played pawn to a6 and this pawn to a6 is the first moment in the game where Magnus uh, thought uh, yeah, okay, I, I'm leading the tournament, but uh, I could play for more than uh, a draw this game. And by playing bishop to e6, Vincent uh, sort of rel relinquished control of, uh, over the e4 pawn. It was uh, attacked twice, now it's only attacked by the knight on f6. And Magnus takes advantage of this and plays pawn to f4. And he spent quite a lot of time. Uh, he, this could be Magnus's longest think of the game. He spent some six uh, minutes uh, studying this uh, position. Uh, and he played pawn to f4. And now the problem is, and uh, look at this amazing variation. Vincent played knight to h7 here. But just to show you what happened if bishop to b7 is played. Uh, what if Vincent just asks, uh, what about uh, the, the e4 pawn? Uh, so we so, sort of uh, remember that uh, game between Rudolf, Sch Rudolf Spielmann and Paul Keres, where Paul Keres went back with the light square bishop and just asked uh, Spielmann, what, what is this pawn move? Uh, but the problem here is that uh, after, let's say, bishop to b7, we have a capture on e5, and after knight captures on e4, queen to e1. You attack the knight here. And now the problem is you can't play, I mean, you kind of have to play d5, but now after c captures and queen captures, uh, trying to move the knight and sort of checkmate the white king, there's c4. And you're just going to lose the knight on e4. If you go with the queen here, then d5, you chase away the queen and you pick up the free piece. However, after this um, uh, d5 move and c captures on d5, you could go for knight captures on c3, a very nasty piece sacrifice. And after queen captures, queen captures on d5, now threatening checkmate on g2. And it seems like, uh, well... Okay, maybe white can get a draw here because it, it certainly doesn't look like white should be playing this. Uh, after king to f2, white is just winning. That's the uh, reality of the situation. And if queen to g2 check, king to e1, uh, yes, the white king is on e1, but everything is fine. Queen captures on h2, just bishop to f4. You defend everything nicely. The bishop is very nice. The queen is very nicely placed. Uh, the rook will kick away the queen from h2. You can even double up on the f-file here. This is a very nice... Uh, probably even winning position for white. Uh, so that's uh, the idea Magnus was studying when he spent those six minutes playing pawn to f4. And Vincent agrees. He plays knight to h7. And he, uh, I guess he trusted Magnus as he spent only two minutes calculating this stuff. 
uh, or he calculates incredibly fast. We have pawn to f5 and now king to h8, preparing to bring the, knight, uh, the other knight over to g8 and then claim the f6 square, maybe with the other knight. We have knight to a1, uh, also possible for Magnus's rook b2, just doubling up on the f-file, but he wants to get this knight over to the king side. Knight a1, knight to g8, and now knight to c2, and now pawn to g5 by Vincent. Uh, very nicely played, as uh, of course you are never considering uh, capturing on g6 al passant, as after f captures, the f-file opens up, and uh, all of black's pieces just uh, come alive. So what you could do after g5 is consider pawn to h4. And this is sort of the theme of this game. Do you, do you execute h4 now? Do you execute h4 on any of the other moves? For example, captures king to g2, now rook to h1, and you put immense um, uh, pressure on, on black's position with the queen, with, with the two bishops. Uh, it would be very, very strong. But uh, again, nothing too concrete. So you have to... Uh, you know, you, you have to decide on it and then make the best of it. Magnus says there is still time. No need to rush it. Knight to e3. We have knight g to f6 and now rook to b2. Preparing to bring the rook into the game. We have rook to e8 uh, and queen to f3. Still, Magnus is waiting with the pawn push and now pawn to c5 by Vincent. Here, Vincent says, uh, okay, you either push d5 and then we settle matters uh, on the king side or on the queen side but the uh, situation in the middle stays closed and uh, okay Magnus could play something like d captures on e5 and after d captures something like knight to d5 but again it's nothing uh, nothing spectacular you you don't have a forced uh, variation here that wins you the game so Magnus says nope pawn to d5 he will slow play this and by slow play this I mean play as slowly as possible uh, rook to g8. Now the situation in the center has been resolved. Everything is, uh, uh, you know, s sort of cemented. No pawns can go anywhere. And now it's really a matter of can Magnus break through with h4 or can he break through with something like a4, a5. So he starts with h3. We have king to g7. Vincent getting his king out of the corner. Pawn to a4. We have bishop to c8 and now rook to a2. Preparing to push the pawn to a5. So bishop to d7 uh, and now, okay, you could go pawn to a5 and then be, uh, be captures on a5. You do open up the position. Uh, again, nothing too concrete. So Magnus still waits. He plays queen to d1, sort of uh, waiting for Vincent to make a mistake as Vincent is playing a bit slower than Magnus. Uh, here at this point, Magnus had around 20 minutes on the clock. Uh, Vincent had some 13 and a half minutes on the clock. So rook to b8 and now bishop to d2 and rook to b7. And the point is uh, Magnus is just making his moves very quickly. He only takes a few seconds to make a move. And Vincent, for example, uh, well, he could just uh, close the position on the queen side here. He spent three minutes uh, on rook to b7. And okay, Magnus again played bishop to uh, e1, spent really only seconds and again king to f8 vincent spending a minute on this move we have rook f to f2 uh, and now king to e7 again vincent spends a minute on the move and now the situation on the clock is magnus 20 minutes uh, vincent seven minutes on the clock we have rook f to b2 uh, uh, shifting the, the attention towards the queen side and queen to c7. We have pawn to g4 uh, and pawn to a6. Queen to e2 and now pawn to a5. So Vincent closes the position on the queen side and now the only way to make some sort of a breakthrough here is either to, uh, either to have some sort of a triple battery here on the queen side and then just capture the b6 pawn. Uh, but uh, white, black is of course always in time. You move the bishop, you put a knight on d7, the b6 pawn is defended. So really the only way to make progress here is to push that pawn to h4 but that of course it requires preparation so magnus starts preparing queen f3 uh, we have queen to d8 and now rook to h2 queen to e8 now comes bishop to c2 uh, and queen to f8 we have king to f1 now look at uh, magnus's king magnus will now shift the king all the way to a3 uh, before he makes uh, an advance on the king side we have king to d8 uh, bishop to d1 uh, king to c7, Vincent also brings the king to the queen side as he knows what's coming. King to e2, uh, now comes rook to b8. We have king to d2, queen to g7, king to c1, and now rook to h8. We have rook to h1 and rook b to g8. And now just rook a to h2. This is like watching uh, one of those movies where uh, two huge armies are ready to collide, you know, uh, in front of a small corridor. And you know that that's what's going to happen and that's what the movie will be about. Uh, th that th this is what this game is about. Uh, H4 will be played and then uh, ho 
all, all, all hell will break loose. We have queen to f8, uh, king to b2, and now queen to e8. King to a3, finally Magnus' king finds safety on a3. Uh, although it's not, um, uh, uh, well, it is very safe. You do have to be careful about this queen bishop battery going after the a4 pawn. The bishop is very nicely placed on d1, defending that pawn. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, going to be about the h4 pawn push. We have queen to f8. Bishop to d2, queen back to e8, and bishop to c1. We have queen to f8, knight to f1, and queen to e7, and finally knight to g3. And uh, you, you will not get a, a better setup than this uh, if you are to advance the pawn to h4. Uh, queen to f8, and now Magnus has to decide. Does he want to draw here, or is he, does he feel comfortable advancing the pawn to h4? And yes, he does. He feels comfortable. Pawn to h4. Now, the downside of this is that once Vincent Cap on h4 and chances are he will uh he does get the g5 square for his knight and it's really a question how you will get that knight away from there uh so queen to g7 vincent not in a rush to capture anything uh, neither is magnus he just moves the queen queen to g2 you could capture but then uh, again we mentioned that that only helps vincent gets his knight to uh, g5 so queen to g2 and bishop back to c8 and now magnus captures on g5 as there is nothing more to try here knight captures on g5 and now knight to h5 the knight was sort of stuck on g3 guarding the e4 pawn from both of the knights uh, but now the uh, the the jump comes with an attack on the queen so vincent has to react and you have to capture if you move the queen you're just gonna lose the knight on f6 so knight captures rook captures and now pawn to f6 a questionable move uh maybe maybe not the best you could just play a waiting move uh, but uh i mean it's uh, very hard to say because Vincent is already down to 20 seconds on the clock uh, and it doesn't seem like there's anything left for, for Magnus to do here. But he plays queen to h2, uh, triples up on the h file and goes after the h pawn. But okay, Vincent will get the e4 pawn, so he goes after it. Knight captures on e4, bishop captures on h6, attacking the queen and now queen to e7. We have king to b2, uh, an important move to throw in, uh, defending the c3 pawn and now bishop to d7. And uh, it's a really, really uh, tough position to handle, especially with little time on the clock. But okay, Magnus does have five minutes on the clock. Uh, feel free to pause the video, you know, feel the vibrations with Magnus and find the only move that wins you the game uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on uh, solving the Tzu Tzwang. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook to H4. That's the only move that wins the game. And uh, the, the reason is that uh, Vincent has no moves. That's the, that's the point. Uh, to give you an example, okay, if you play something like Rook to G1, uh, then you allow him back into the game. Then uh, Knight can come to G5, and now it doesn't matter if the Bishop captures... Um, uh, because a rook will capture on h5 and nothing is really happening here. On the other hand, if you play, let's say, bishop to c1, uh, then rook captures on h5, let's say g captures, bishop captures on f5, and again, everything is fine. You're even giving black some chances here. However, after rook to h4, there is no move Vincent can make. Uh, point being that now if you try something like rook to h7, uh, again, bishop to c2, and the knight is trapped. The the trapped knight is the point of the game of this position, as now the knight cannot retreat to g5. If the knight comes to g5, you will capture it, and then after rook captures on h4, the same bishop recaptures, and you're just up a full piece and winning the game. So after this rook to h4 move, uh, of course, you cannot uh, move the knight. You, you, of course, you know bishop to c2 is coming. Vincent has to figure out a way uh, out of this position, and he plays bishop to e8. It is the strongest move recommended by the engine. Bishop to c2, and now rook captures on h6. It was the only way to move forward. Rook captures and knight to g5. So he gave up the exchange uh, in, in hopes of um, uh, pausing the push and uh, holding this, this position. So rook to h8, Magnus of course goes for further trades, now he is up material, captures, captures, and pawn to e4. Uh, blocking the bishop, but also starting to advance the past e pawn, but uh, not very relevant. Magnus just plays queen to h2, and uh, the pawn really isn't that powerful. If you play e3, let's say queen to f4, and now if e2, it doesn't really matter, rook to e1, you move the queen next and take the pawn, there's no way to put any pressure here. So he tries knight to f3, attacks the queen, queen to f4, and now just knight back to g5. You have to uh, add a defender here to the pawn, 
king to b3 even, uh, freeing up the bishop, so now the a4 pawn is defended, bishop to d7, and now rook to e1, everything is now ready for the capture of the pawn, and Vincent tries one last trick, he plays queen to f8, sort of uh, hoping that bishop captures an e4 can be played, and then he just uh, pins the uh, pins the bishop, uh, but even that uh, w would be winning for Magnus, so it's not, uh, it's, a, it's a nice attempt, but it doesn't work. Uh, but Magnus doesn't uh, fall for it, he just plays king to a3, now he's out of any bishop captures and a4 check ideas, uh, we have queen to h8, and now finally bishop captures an e4, we have queen to h3 going after the c pawn, uh, but king to b2, just nicely defending, and there's no way for the black queen to continue harassment as all of the squares here are covered. Uh, so queen goes back to h7, and now bishop back to c2. So Magnus snatches the pawn, brings back the bishop, and now it's, uh, well, time to utilize that uh, e-file uh, to Magnus's advantage. We have queen to g7, uh, rook to e6. Of course, that is the way uh, forward. Uh, you're going after the d6 pawn, and you are welcoming any sort of capture on e6, because then you get a beautiful pass pawn. For example, bishop captures, you'll play f captures, and after the queen blocks it, a bishop to f5, you can... Uh, uh, create your own blockade here and now just get the queen into the game uh, it would be a very very easy win for white so after rook to e6 knight to f7 was played by vincent he guards the d6 pawn and now there are many ways you could continue this but there is one way that it just ends the game on the spot it is the 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 most uh, beautiful way to end, end the game uh, once again feel those vibrations and uh, win the game for magnus while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, solving two very, very difficult positions this, the, uh, this game. If you found both of these uh, positions, I, I imagine you're like a 2200 player at least, or, or you should be. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to g5. Looks silly as the pawn, the square is guarded three times by the pawn, by the knight, and by the queen. Uh, but just to show you what happens if you capture with the knight, of course, then just queen captures on d6 with check. Once the king moves, rook e7 attacks the queen, will capture to the bishop checkmate the king next so of course the knight cannot move the knight is stuck guarding the the d6 pawn uh, if you capture with the pawn then you don't move the queen you throw in pawn to f6 and you're, you're not in time to trade because pawn captures and you cannot stop promotion uh I'll show you uh, like this knight to h6 is not possible as the rook covers that square and if you capture the rook then just uh, uh, the pawn queens so what you will have to do after f6 is move the queen to f8 but now queen to e4 and again the queen is coming to g6 then to g7 or if knight to e5 you can just take the knight and after d captures queen captures with check after queen to d6 just queen captures on g5 and with two extra pawns you will of course win easily it's merely a matter of putting the queen to g7 and advancing the f pawn to victory so after g5 vincent tried one last idea queen captures on g5 but it doesn't work we have captures captures and and pawn to f6, Magnus, uh, of course, uh, happily leaving the rook on e6, waiting for captures, but uh, it would not help Vincent. So Vincent tries knight to e5, he gets the knight into the game, but now Magnus just plays rook, captures on e5, and he was in this position on move 73, that Vincent Keimer resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, so, uh, of course, once the rook is captured, uh, uh, the pawn advances to f7, and the queening square is a dark square, the light square bishop is uh, helpless to, uh, to, to, to stop the f pawn, and if you don't capture it, you're just down too much material, and you're gonna lose uh, this game. So, uh, what did Vincent do wrong here? Magnus didn't really play an ambitious opening with white, uh, he... Uh, uh, played, I mean, some okay moves, uh, but uh, at, at the point where Vincent uh, held the position and he said, all right, this is a draw, there's no way forward for you, uh, he had to make moves, and Magnus was making moves really quickly, and Vincent was spending sometimes three minutes, sometimes two minutes, sometimes a minute for a move, and you don't have that many minutes, you have, he, he had like 20 minutes when um, uh, this whole thing started happening, and uh, before you know it, he was uh, below with the, the one minute mark, and uh, okay, at the end of the game, Magnus was also below the one minute mark, but it was a winning position uh, that Magnus could easily blitz out, so yeah, it's not enough to get an equal position against Magnus, you also have to be able to match his speed in playing these positions to you know keep the equilibrium going if you don't uh, he will find a crack and he will he will take you down he is uh, he, he's a very strong player 
Uh, and yeah, here are the standings uh, after round nine. Uh, so Magnus, uh, sorry, those are the wrong standings. Let me just find the real ones. There we go. Uh, these were the standings before this round uh, was played. But okay, we can also check out, uh, you know, what what has changed. Uh, there we go. Magnus uh, uh, in his sole lead with uh, six and a half points. Rapport with five and a half in second place. Maxim Vashelagrav with four and a half. Ding with four. Uh, Daniel Freeman with three and a half. And Vincent Keimer with three points. I mean, uh, Vincent is an incredibly strong player, but uh, this is an incredibly strong field. And, you know, sometimes it's just uh, it just isn't your tournament. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A brilliant, brilliant victory for Magnus. So what, what are you going to do? He's just uh, really strong, like I said. Uh, I would like to thank uh, David Gatten, Joyful Chess Lover, uh, Mr. Hoodie Guy, Andreas Rosenthal, and Beaster Bunny for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.